Hello my old school gamers and welcome to the channel. Today I'd like to talk about one of my all-time favorite video games since I was a child, Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage. This game in my opinion is the absolute best of the original trilogy, so I thought it would be interesting to go through every single level of Insomniac's first masterpiece and find out which levels are truly top tier. For this list, I will be going through the reignited version, because I think Toys for Bob absolutely nailed this project. It even might be the definitive way to experience these games. I have created a ranking system based on Stuart Copeland's masterful soundtrack, level design, and in-level orb missions. As many of these levels ranked the same numbers, I will be required to use some personal bias. After all, this is 100% subjective, and your list could be the exact opposite of mine. Both are completely valid. I will be discussing the levels as I play them in order, and ranking them at the end. I left out hub worlds and speedways. Although I do love these levels, they're just not the same format, so it wouldn't really make sense to compare them or keep them on the same list. Right off the bat, I gotta say, wow. This game looks absolutely gorgeous. The soundtrack to Glimmer, in my opinion, is the Spyro the Dragon theme song. It's so lively, major key and whimsical, and it immediately sells you on the world of Avalar. One of the best songs in the entire game, for sure. The level design is rather simplistic, but it does an excellent job in guiding you through the structure of each level. Also, all the beautiful gems scouted about just brings a smile to my face. What can I say? They're beautiful. I really enjoy the mission with shooting the lizards. It's a great tutorial of how to use the aiming mechanics. Simple, but fun. The two gliding missions are insanely easy, but do their job in teaching you the power-up system. Kill the required amount of enemies and their souls will power up the specials. Kinda dark, actually, now that I think about it. I think that it's a massive improvement from the fairies giving you a kiss on the nose. Excellent and iconic tutorial level. Alright, moving on down to Colossus. I really want to play Meshuggah's I Am Colossus, but I don't really understand YouTube's copyright laws yet, so I'm just going to avoid that for now. Coming in strong with another iconic level in this masterpiece of a game. I love the music in this level. It completely immerses you into that spiritual monk type aesthetic. It's almost kind of eerie at first before it jumps into that upbeat energy Stuart Copeland perfection. The level design is very straightforward with a bunch of small areas to find. It never feels too crowded either. A bit empty, but well done nonetheless. Flaming the Ten Golden Statues is a fun mission that encourages the player to explore the entire level. It's easy fun, but effortless for any experienced player. The hockey missions, however, I'm not a fan of. I do not enjoy how Spyro handles on ice. The whole thing just kind of drags in my opinion and moves way too slowly. It's not painful by any means, but I feel like the only enjoyment I get out of it is from pure nostalgia. One thing's for sure though, the best thing about this level is the aesthetic. One thing I kind of found weird about the remake is how the Yeti gets crushed. In the original game, he stomps on the floor and the vibrations make the statue fall on him. But in this game, he just yells super loud and I guess that's enough. But he's been screaming for the entire level, so I don't know, it just feels like a missed opportunity, but it doesn't ruin the experience whatsoever. It's just a nitpick from an old fan. Next up, we have Idle Springs, and goddamn, this place looks so cool. It's swampy, dank atmosphere. Mixed with that industrial gothic soundtrack is just expert. I also love the cryptic architecture here. And this is honestly where the ranking got tough, and why I couldn't put theme in the ranking. Every level is just so goddamn cool. How could I rank them on theme? They're all awesome. The design in this one isn't lacking either. I love how you can traverse back through the location, but above everything, amounting to some pretty great early game platforming. The missions in this one aren't the best, however. The supercharge one is fun, if not ridiculously easy, but the puzzle one is pretty lame. Hey Spyro, solve this puzzle by stepping on every corner, once! Wow, you did a great job! Hey Spyro, feed this idol, just don't give him the red ones! Wow, great job! Oh, and now this puzzle is completely random, and it's just trial and error. There's no strategy whatsoever. Uh, yeah. Honestly, my favorite part of that mission is just finding it after learning how to swim. Having said that, 
It's a level I enjoy going to every time. Here we go, baby. This place is my jam. It's our first real sense of challenge, in my opinion, and the atmosphere totally reflects that. The enemies in this location might actually hit you every now and again. The music is this somber and industrial tone that matches the vibe perfectly. The level design is top notch with tons of platforming and areas to check out. Using supercharge to break the windmills to get to the buttons that stop the turbines to make for some great platforming. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Magnifique. Replacing the lightning stones is a fun mission, uh, if not a little tedious. However, I do love the design of these blue guys, and as a kid, they freaked me out for some reason. They also looked more deformed. But uh, yeah, this one's okay. Not the best, but whatever, man. It's all Spyro. It's all good. Coming in with Sunny Beach. This level's uh, pretty good. I like it. For some reason, I just don't have a lot to say about this one. It's an escort level, which, although they usually suck, the baby turtles are actually never in any danger, so yeah, whatever. It's definitely a brightly colored and cute level with some upbeat music. The level design makes use of the swimming mechanic, but um, yeah, that's kind of it. Level design is nothing amazing. However, I do like freeing the box turtles. It's a really fun use of the fire cannon upgrade. A couple of crates are actually in some pretty unique spots, yeah? Saving the turtles from being cooked by that duck guy is actually pretty fun too. You have to come back to this one after learning how to climb, which is a nice use of revisiting levels. And the mission is pretty fun. It is weird how there's no longer a fixed camera for this mission, but I guess it doesn't really ruin the fun at all. The only thing that makes no sense is the motivation for this guy to give you orbs. Like, dude, I just fucked up your entire day, why are you rewarding me? Ah, uh, whatever. This definitely isn't among my favorite levels, but it's, it's pretty good. It's a good level. Aquaria Towers! Oh boy, where to start with this one? Is it even worth mentioning that the music fits the location perfectly? You know it does. You don't need me to tell you that shit. It actually reminds me of the lost precursor city in the first Jack and Daxter game, which is a banger level. I mean, what can I even say? Do you have eyes? Just look at this place, man. I love filling up the entire map with water. Such a cool concept. Once you do that, kill enough enemies, you can charge up with the fire cannon and blast away the mechanical sharks, allowing you to explore extra areas that you couldn't earlier. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Once you submerge the level, you can access this gorgeous upper area. I didn't even know this existed when I was really young, and I always thought this level just didn't have orb missions. Speaking of orb missions, I always found it kind of disappointing that this area wasn't put to more use. The only missions you do here are flying through a couple rings. whoop de fucking do Also, the camera angle in the reignited version is totally botched. Not sure what happened there. It doesn't make it impossible to do, but it's just a weird oversight. The other mission of saving King Flippy's children is a much better mission that provides a little challenge. This level kicks ass, but I wish it had some better orb missions. I think blowing up some potentially more dangerous mechanical sharks would have been a great use of orbs, but hey, what do I know? I'm just a dickhead with a microphone. Let's move on, we're not even halfway through. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the most iconic location of this entire game. It was used in the title screen in the original, and also has its image used to represent Spyro 2 in the reignited screen. I have the absolute fondest memories of this level, and I always play it first after arriving in Autumn Plains. My only gripe with this level in the reignited version is the design choice of these little demon guys. I never saw them as flying cat monstrosities, but whatever, I guess. I love the prehistoric desert vibe so much, and huh, it's weird. The level design is great, don't get me wrong, but it's also not the most complex. It's just a circle with a platform challenge and a secret area. The reason there's a tone shift in my voice is just because, as a kid, this was one of my favorite levels, hands down. And I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, I, I, I think it might just be the aesthetic. Just how cool this level looks. That might have just been enough. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about the missions. These ones are really good. I love saving the villagers. It's a fun challenge. And by challenge, it's, it's actually pretty damn challenging. Even as an adult, it takes me a few tries on this one. Collecting the bones from those bipedal lizard weird things is actually a really fun mission too. And I love the cutscene afterwards. Going into this, I was like, all right, Skelos Badlands, that's gotta be top three at least. 
and uh, now I'm just not so sure. So I guess we'll find out later, right? This is a level that I absolutely adored as a child. I just love winter levels, I suppose. However, I was surprised to remember how simple and straightforward it is. I always enjoy unfreezing the ice builders for them to help me progress through the level. The music is nothing to write home about, especially compared to the other levels. Blaming those bug things, or draklets, as they call them, is a fun mission, but it seems like their hitbox is tiny because I always miss them, and unless you're lucky, you have to get them all in one swing or else they'll begin to multiply rapidly. I like it though. And the cave has to be the coolest part of this level. Bringing back the snow leopard, on the other hand, is stupid easy, and because of that, boring. I personally adore this level, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it in the lower tier of levels, honestly. Here we go, baby, coming in hot with one of the big boys. I love the vibe of this one so much. The cool blue nighttime aesthetic is just so welcoming. I love how it's cool and breezy, but also surrounded by lava. <laughs> it's, it's a fun little contrast, I suppose. The level design in this one is pretty cool. I love how the trolley functions on top of the walls. That's so clever. I love that stuff. Speaking of which, I'm saying it. Trouble with the trolley is one of the best missions in the game. It introduces its own set of mechanics, which, if I'm being honest, it handles really well. This isn't challenging due to poor design. It's good design. And if you mess up on this mission, it's your fault, not the game's. It's great. Great! I look forward to it every time. <laughs> Blowing up those spiky sphere things is a, it's a good mission. Good use of the cannon. Nothing riveting, but good enough to keep these missions at a high score. Although it's a pretty short level, lasting only about 9 or 10 minutes to an experienced player, it's 10 minutes well spent. Love this place. Coming in next, we have everyone's most nostalgic memory. This explosive war zone, strangely fighting against the team we were helping in Breeze Harbor. Spyro, you exploitative little bastard. Leave the scumbaggery to money bags, my dude. Anyways, the music in this one is absolutely iconic in the franchise. It's so bouncy and fun and memorable. The level design is so goddamn cool. You stay above the level to get to the munitions building that grants you a talisman. But jump down below. And there are three locations to explore. Each having their own missions. Curtain mechanics. Uh, that's kind of annoying. Especially getting the last two buggers across that gap. Not a terrible mission, but probably the weakest part of the level, for sure. Reuniting Romeo and Juliet, on the other hand, is so cool. I remember feeling like a genius doing this as a child. The environment just makes this platforming so fun to traverse. The only part in the remake that I found was stupid was giving Juliet a girl's voice. It's kind of like missing the whole joke to the whole thing. I mean, maybe they figured it was homophobic. I don't, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I still love the romance gimmick though. Lovers from enemy tribes. So close, yet so far. Insomniac, you quirky bastards. Now entering Scorch. First of all, kill it with fire. Aside from that, this is gonna be a short one. The music is probably my favorite part of this level. The theme is great, but the level design is pretty boring. The Hunter mission is pathetically easy, and the Bombo the Flag Keeper mission is tedious. Yay! Get to run through the subpar level design three more times. Yay! This level isn't bad by any means, but definitely not my favorite. I don't have a whole lot to say, so MOVING ON! That bagpipe music is a jam, don't lie. Three and the setters from being dropped in stone was a nice callback to the first game. I'm sorry you had to hear that. <laughs> I never noticed until this playthrough, but this song is actually the same music played in Idle Springs. While it sucks that this level doesn't get a unique soundtrack, it still feels fitting for the darker aesthetic. I love the enemies in this level. These bush bastards are real sons of bitches too. They always get me. The level design in this one is great too. I love how there's an entire level underneath everything, with a bunch of twisting corridors that honestly confuses me a bit almost every time. I don't know why, but I just love these speed boost missions. I guess it's probably because I'm a big Sonic the Hedgehog fan, so gotta go fast, right? Escorting the Alchemist is a pain in the ass because he's either a complete dumbass or a total dick. 
or both. Mo most likely both. But it is a decent challenge, and Hunter's Mission is pretty fun too. You can't do Hunter's Mission on your first go because you need to have the head bash acquired. I feel like this game could have done with more of this revisiting levels format. I think it only happens three times in the game. Oh yeah, by the way, don't bother with the Alchemist mission on your first go because you're just going to have to do it again to get to Hunter. It's kind of weird. Magma Cone. Before I bought Reignited, I always forgot about this one for some reason. I have no idea why, but I'm probably the least nostalgic for this level, which doesn't make a lot of sense. I think Magma Cone does a lot of unique things with the mechanics. You need to climb your way up Magma Cone avoiding molten boulders, and then you use the flying upgrade to spit projectiles at lava monsters. This mission's great. I love the environment on this part of the level. However, I do not enjoy the crystal collecting with Hunter. It's a real pain in the ass, and I feel like if they had a fixed camera, it would have made the mission a lot more enjoyable. I kind of always dread this part, even if I did do it on my first try this time around. I like the music in this one. It's not that memorable except for that weird voice in the background going, Oh yeah. Definitely not one of the best tracks in the game. Now we go to Shady Oasis. And uh, spoilers, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one either. I can't put my finger on it, but as a kid and still to this day, I always wish I could skip this one. I love the enemy variety and the Middle Eastern theme, but the music doesn't grab me at all, and the level design just feels like a long hallway to me. I do love the callback to the thieves from the first game. That's definitely the highlight of this level. As for saving the hippos from drowning, it's a super easy mission that needs the head bash, so of course we gotta come back and play this entire level over to do it. I don't know. I'm sorry if you like this level a lot, and uh, this is just my opinion, but this one just doesn't grab me. Okay, here we go. I love this level so much. It probably has the highest difficulty just from getting from start to finish. These bug robots actually put up a decent fight, and I probably died the most in this level throughout the years. There's plenty of platforming and areas to explore, which in my opinion, is what makes a spiral level fun. The music fits this level perfectly, with its mechanical, but kinda southern twang. This place is just so bright and whimsical. It reminds me of Storyland mixed with my life as a teenage robot or some shit, I, I don't know. It's great! Flaming the bugs is simple, but a fun task. I don't know, I guess I just enjoy chasing things as Spyro. Cleaning the tractor path on the other hand is my jam! I love the supercharge, and in this level it makes its best appearance. Kind of like in Breeze Harbor, the tractor path exists over the entire level, and I think that's always a cool set piece. This level is a masterpiece! Okay, I love, 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 LOVE this level's theme, man. The farm animals roided up with technologies has always put a smile on my face. The music is one of the most memorable in the game, too. Its upbeat and fast-paced artificial sound fits the level expertly. It also shares melodic resemblance to Glimmer's soundtrack at a certain point. The beginning half of the level is just a bunch of hallways and elevators, but the second half is an aerial playground. I love looking in every nook and cranny to find all the gems. I also love using the combo upgrade to take down the flying saucers. It's easy as can be, but still really fun. I wish it was a bit harder and there was a little more of that in this game, because it's pretty enjoyable. Good level, yeah? Okay, holy shit, two more levels. All right, let's get them over with so we can get this list going, huh? I'm saying it right now. I really wish the music in Mystic Marsh was better. It almost sounds like a track from Jack and Daxter, which plays more focus on ambience than melody. It still sounds like a Spyro song, don't get me wrong, but I think with a little more flair, it could really help this level a lot. This level is so good though. I'm pretty sure it has the highest quantity of enemies too. You got your rhino snails and your your uh, turtle elephants and your your uh, puffy duck platypus spiky things and uh, the, the monkey uh, lemur monk poop throwing monkey lemurs and you got the the uh, I love the tree bridges so much. 
They just look so cool. That's all I can really say. And they also add to the size of the level too, which is cool. Also, all the underwater tunnels can actually be pretty disorienting, which makes polishing this level a little more challenging. The missions in this level are fire. <laughs> uh, what the fuck was that? Catching the thieves that stole the spark plugs is a great challenge that always leaves me at the edge of my seat. And getting the professor's pencil back is a fun and interactive puzzle that might actually be pretty ch p p that, 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 that getting the professor's pencil is a fun and interactive puzzle that might actually be pretty challenging for someone new. Whew, I don't know what the hell happened there. Definitely a top tier level. Play this one now. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Last but not least. Let's fly in, shall this we? This is another level where the theme and atmosphere do the talking. I like exploring through all the different temples, but as far as the main objective is concerned, the combat and platforming are incredibly easy. Following this beautiful creature to his secret club is decent enough so long as the game agrees that you are hiding. <laughs> I enjoyed freezing the flaming honeycomb monsters to ring the bells too. It's a fun level, but without its aesthetic, without its you a do. aesthetic, you a do so. aesthetic, you, aesthetic, you, you, aesthetic. You can, you. Fuck, man, what's wrong with me right now? It's not the most iconic by any means, let's just say that. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for, I assume. The list. So, there are 18 levels, and I'll be starting from the least good to the most good. Obviously, none of these levels are bad, so I don't want to say the worst. But, without further ado, here we go. Number 18, Scorch. Number 17, Shady Oasis. Number 16, Cloud Temples. Number 15, Crystal Glacier. Number 14, Sunny Beach. Number 13, Magma Cone. Number 12, Colossus. Number 11, Idle Springs. Number 10, Glimmer. Number 9, Skelos Badlands. Number 8, Aquaria Towers. Number 7, Fracture Hills. Number 6, Huracos. Number 5, Mystic Marsh. Number four, Breeze Harbor. Number three, Metropolis. Number two, Robotica Farms. And number one, have you been keeping count? The best level in Spyro Ripto's Rage is... Zephyr. so I don't want to say the worst. But, without further ado, here we go. Number 18, Scorch. Number 17, Shady Oasis. Number 16, Cloud Temples. Number 15, Crystal Glacier. Number 14, Sunny Beach. Number 13, Magma Cone. Number 12, Colossus. Number 11, Idle Springs. Number 10, Glimmer. Number 9, Skelos Badlands. Number 8, Aquaria Towers. Number 7, Fracture Hills. Number 6, Huracos. Number five, Mystic Marsh. Number four, Breeze Harbor. Number three, Metropolis. Number two, Robotica Farms. And number one, have you been keeping count? The best level in Spyro Ripto's Rage is... 
Zephyr. 